Okay everybody, uh, welcome to this new video in which I thought, uh, based on my last video uh, about the question if you can code on an iPad, uh, can you actually code on an iPhone? So I'm running an iPhone SE here uh, which has an iPhone 5 form factor and I've installed my uh, most favorite iOS IDE which is PlayJS and when you start the app uh, you can either choose uh, one of two projects which already exists. We're not going to do that. Create a new project. Um, and I'm going to call this, um, I don't know, super project. Um, there are different templates. Uh, as you can see, we have Node.js, uh, Node.js with React, with Vue, with Next, or React Native. Uh, I'm going to go with Node and React. Um, I can choose to store the um, the files uh, here in this default folder or I can select different directory which I'm not going to do or which are pretty cool I can uh, clone the source code from a git repository for now which I won't do that and we won't do that but you know it's always good to know that we could if you want it so what we see here is our uh, Node.js uh, backend application and essentially it's uh, listening to uh, port 3001 and then uh, delivers here this uh, index.html file. Um, so as you can see when the keyboard is up it's really hard to uh, see a lot of code because the keyboard is kind of blocking most of the screen real estate, especially on a super small screen like this one. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so uh, there are more files. Uh, if I go on the icon on the bottom left corner, uh, I can see all the files in my project. Project, Of course, we have our package JSON, our index.html, and we have um, our source files. So if you go to app.jsx, we have our React code, right? So if I uh, click on the play icon on the bottom left corner, it will ask me if I want to, um, you know, uh, download all the dependencies. So this is gonna take uh, some time. Uh, so let me just grab my beer. Mm. You know what's really frustrating? I just did this uh, video like 30 minutes ago uh, and kind of wanted you guys to uh, enjoy the ride with me, you know, uh, trying this app for the first time. But when I was like 95% through the video, the app crashed and my whole iPhone rebooted. I'm not even kidding. Uh, so that was a huge, huge pain in the dick. So I essentially have to redo everything now. So I'm a little spoiled now. I know a lot of the features. Um, that PlayJS has here on the iPhone, uh, so I'm not surprised anymore, uh, which is a bummer because you know I want you guys to uh, enjoy the uh, journey of exploring this whole thing. But yeah, it is it what it is. Um, and you know, uh, the whole idea of coding on an iPhone um, I had when I watched the Apple keynote, uh, which just happened, like I think like maybe an hour ago or so. Um, about the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 uh, I do really like because I'm a big fan of these square edged iPhones um, ever since the iPhone 5 and the iPhone SE um, I never upgraded to anything beyond that so I never got the iPhone 6, 6s, 7, 8, 10, 11 I never bought these I still have these super small iPhone 5 style uh, iPhones um, all right, so it's it's now launching the app on port 3001 and it's done. So I'm now gonna click on this uh, round globe icon to the left of the trash icon. And it's now starting the app, right? So which is great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start customizing the whole thing a little bit, uh, which means I'm gonna remove some of the code here. And you can already tell that this is a huge, huge, huge pain in the dick to type on this small screen. Um, 
And also whenever you type something, it tries to recompile. So I'm going to stop the compiler here for now. And I'm going to remove, or at least I'm going to try to remove most of the source code here. And it's like almost impossible. If you wanted to, you know, to press and hold, then kind of, you know, mark some of the, the source code in order to, to, to delete it or to move it, it's, it's darn impossible. All right, so now we have this empty uh, div here. We can remove the logo. So I'm gonna triple tap on this line. That's that. Um, there's also a CSS file uh, associated with this one and I want to kind of get rid of all the stuff in here. So I'm gonna try to see if I can uh, maybe select all, where is it? Select all, okay. So this way I've removed all the CSS files go back to my app.js. So uh, what are we going to build? I thought I just want to prove that, you know, you can do um, a service call from your front end uh, to your uh, to your back end, right? Um, and for this, I'm going to uh, I'm going to add an input field. input uh, slash so this row at the top of the keyboard um, is kind of useful uh, so it looks like the plagiarist developers have added this on purpose and it's actually working really well um, and we need an on change handler Like that, um, we uh, we get an event from this from here. All right. Uh, we need to set a state, right? So I'm gonna go this dot set state because this is a controlled component whoops in react you need to do this um, and I'm just gonna call this text and I pass in the value that we get so e dot target dot value I hope this is correct. It's it's really hard to type on this, guys. It's super hard. Uh, okay, so this needs to be an object literal, I just noticed. Uh, and changes are so difficult on this virtual keyboard. So this does set state text and we assign the value to it. And of course, we need to initialize our state in a constructor. Oh my god. Oh no, 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 I don't want this. Holy moly. Okay, so constructor. Oh shit. I wish this thing had a keyboard, like a proper physical keyboard. Uh, Call the super constructor. Uh, and we're going to initialize our state. This dot state equals curly braces text. And we're going to start with some empty strings. like that okay um, and another thing I want is a button so when we click that button um, I want our text to be submitted to our uh, rest service which is going to be written in express or note so uh, button on click 
Oh, I'm sweating, guys. I'm really sweating. Where is? And also, I'm like under really a lot of pressure here because I think what what happened when my iPhone crashed is it, it probably ran out of memory um, when I was recording this. So probably after a certain amount of time, it just shuts down when when all the memory is full. Uh, so I have to hurry up a little bit. Uh, so we need another error function here. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna fetch. All right. Uh, and the service will be available on my local host like that. Local host. And it's available under port 3001. And the method I think we just call hello. Yep. Uh, we need to pass in our text. So text equals Uh, plus this dot state dot text okay um, now fetch does return a promise so we have to go dot then right Uh, the promise, uh, it does return a response, right? So we have another error function here. Like that. Uh, we want the result of that fetch call. And of course, uh, rest.txt also returns a promise. So again, we have to go dot then. I'm gonna call this rest2. And you can already tell that on such a small screen, if you have a lot of promise calls it's it's just super hard to keep track of, of all the brackets um, where each function ends and where it starts and another issue here is we don't have a console log and we have no dev tools at least I didn't find it I'm not sure if if, if I just didn't see it or and it exists and I'm not aware of it but for now I'm just gonna alert here okay because I don't know how to uh, print any kind of uh, console log here. Alrighty, so that is our frontend code. Um, let's go back to our backend. Come on. Uh, and this is gonna super simple. We create a new uh, service call. So app dot get. Uh, And I think we 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 named our uh, service call just hellos, right? Um, and we get two parameters, which is the request and the result. Oh, this is so slow. I mean, I am a slow programmer, but you know, on an iPhone screen, this is just horrible. And so all this uh, method does is gonna re return, uh, with the send and concatenation of, uh, whoops. 
request dot what did we call the parameter damn it I need to check that mm, text equals yeah okay so it's called text oops request dot query uh, because you want the uh, the text variable here and all we're going to do is we're just uh, going to append the uh, word world here so in, in theory um, what should happen is the front end sends the word hello to the back end the back end appends the word hello and sends that back and then the front end should display the result of that um, in an alert statement so uh, so it has compiled successfully uh, that works so I'm gonna give this a try okay uh, so uh, I'm just gonna type in hello oops uh, and click the button and it does return me an error okay error Ooh, what the hell it's returning me HTML why is it returning cannot get Okay, I think I have a typo here in the URL. No big deal. Yeah, okay, I see it. There's a colon missing. Let's try again. Uh, it has compiled, run. Type hello. Whoops. Run it. And there you go, it has returned hello world. So we have successfully um, created a front end application with React. Uh, sent that um, and, and, and got some text from the user, put that into an input field, sent that to a backend REST service written with uh, Node and Express, uh, concatenated both strings, sent the result back, and then displayed the result here in the front end. So yeah, it's, it's totally doable to code on an iPhone. It's extremely uncomfortable, guys. Um, I really wished I had a physical keyboard. Uh, maybe that's something that might be supported if I connect it through Bluetooth. Um, something that I definitely not have is um, is a mouse, which is an issue, but it's not too bad. Well, it, it is pretty bad. Okay, let's let's don't let's don't try to um, put makeup on a pig here. Um, but yeah, this was just a fun video. Uh, if you want to also try this out, download PlayJS from the App Store uh, and give it a try yourself. Um, and that's all for today. Have a great day, guys. Bye bye.